Well, I have many examples uh, of that uh, and uh, one of them is that patients and relatives are not being heard and also that uh, healthcare workers on the front end who are trying to do their best also are not being heard. What's most important for 2024 is that we are able to convey the sense of urgency there is to improve patient safety. We know it's there, but why do not everybody take that, uh, take that into their work? You cannot get anywhere without transparency. You have to be open, you have to be transparent, and we should not be so afraid of being transparent because as long as you care and you are able to convey that you are a sincere person or a system that really want to improve things, people understand that we are human beings when we work with them. But what the people do not understand is when we try to cover up and pretend that nothing has happened. Hope of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation uh, is that at our upcoming summit, uh, we, it will be inclusive and we're inviting organizations, physicians, healthcare partners, our nursing colleagues, our pharmaceutical colleagues, our environmental service workers, the hospital administrators, the leaders of healthcare institutions. It takes a village to succeed and I think that the inclusion of all the participants including the hospital architects of the future and including the technology developers who are going to make safe, if you will, artificial intelligence, uh, create diagnostic aids. No one will ever eliminate the healthcare team, but the better the information we have, the more comprehensive and integrated our discussions are aided and abetted by technology that has yet to be invented will continue to improve the healthcare we deliver. Come and join us at the annual summit in 2024. We look forward to receiving your feedback, your ideas, and to joining the movement. The reason I'm involved with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation is it is clearly, since its, since its start, one of the most in, important and most impactful patient safety entities um, in the US and for that matter in the world. Well, something that I've been very interested in for a number of years is helping support healthcare workers who do difficult work, are uh, under substantial stress, and um, ironically can also be traumatized by the same system flaws that ultimately harm patients. So one way that we can improve patient safety is by increasing the psychological safety and increasing the well-being and resilience of healthcare workers. We really would always, we would really all like the people taking care of us to be healthy, but also feeling well, able to do their best job, able to, to um, give us the amount of care and the amount of attention that we really need so that we can um, maintain our health as well as possible, and also maintain our safety. My name is Brandon Lau. I'm an assistant professor of radiology at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, faculty in the Armstrong Institute for Patient Safety and Quality, and co-director of the Johns Hopkins Venous Thromboembolism Collaborative. I think one of the biggest things around improving patient safety in 2024 is understanding what data we currently have what data we still need to transform into actionable information and measures to identify opportunities to improve care in hospitals. I think that we're relying a lot on quality measures that are set on a national level that might not have to do with actual clinical quality improvement. And I think that we need to be very mindful of the data that we're collecting, the information that we're generating from that data to really present actionable information to improve care quality in hospitals. I'm Sanaz Masumi, Chief Operating Officer at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. 2024 marks the 25th anniversary of the ARIES Human Report. 
Now we clearly know that practicing evidence-based medicine prevents patient harm. I look forward to our annual summit in September of 2024 to discuss our progress. My name is Najbeddin Meshkati. I'm a professor of engineering and international relations at the University of Southern California. And my research deals with uh, human factors, safety culture, human systems integration in complex safety critical systems. Safety culture plays a very important role in patient safety. Looking forward to our summit in September 2024, the Patient Safety Movement Foundation Summit, to address this issue much more proactively. What we are going to be doing about improving the safety culture based on the lessons that we have from aviation. It goes back to what Hippocrates said thousands of years ago, which is first to no harm. So if we can first do no harm to anyone who walks in, we will get to zero. I hope to see you all at the September World Patient Safety Science and Technology Summit. We have wonderful speakers who are coming. We have wonderful updates to provide you. And it's a chance for all of us to recharge, reconnect, and make the commitment for the next year.